Good day. Hi. So Jess and I here, we bought this lovely old Jayco Freedom Pop Top when we were stuck in Victoria during the COVID-19 lockdown. Needed somewhere to live. And somewhere mobile that we could take anywhere, travel anywhere with, but that we could also work remotely from. So Sean making videos and um, I'm running my tutoring and OT business on the road. So since living in it for six months, we really enjoyed it. So we decided we wanted to travel Australia in it. Yeah, so we left our previous jobs and became self-employed and we needed a self-sufficient power solution that would cater to all of our needs. So one of the first things is to identify where you're going to put the system. One of the options is in the front boot of the van, which is quite popular. There's a lot of space, a lot of people just put it next to the compliance plate there. But the reason I didn't chose not to put it here is because I'm going to be running an inverter and for the inverter you need to have quite thick gauge cables which are expensive and they'd have to run several meters into where the inverter would be inside or the inverter would be mounted in here which is impractical because you want to be able to use it you know, in the van you'd have to come out if it's raining that's uh, that's no good in my opinion um, yeah so it needed to be inside. The other solution would be under this seat here where the old battery was. So the old battery was just sitting right here and the wiring went under the van to where the SETEC unit was, which was in that hole there. But I found the best solution was underneath this seat here. There was ample more space because there were no drawers. Under this seat, there's a drawer there and a drawer there which consumes quite a lot of the space so under here it was basically unutilized except for that setec unit which was there and the diesel heater which is right at the back underneath with the ducting coming out here found the best place for the battery and screwed the base plate down i had to do a wiring diagram very simple one at the start to the list of components and then i finalized that into a proper wiring diagram. Now I got help online to find out what sort of gauge wiring I needed and all those sorts of things, what sort of circuit breakers. And then it was a matter of turning this piece of paper into reality. Quite a bit of time was spent configuring the board and finding the most efficient position for each component, reducing wiring lengths. I gave it a quick coat of paint and screwed all the main components to the board. It was just a matter of running all the wires, crimping the terminals, and they use heat shrink on all the ends, hence the blow dryer. The bus bars finally arrived, and I was able to finish all the wiring off. I wanted to make this board as separate as it could be from the rest of the system. That being said, that just a few disconnections of cables and the whole board could come out with all the components attached uh, so I can easily upgrade things down the track or fix problems or whatever needs to be done. So you might be wondering what the SETEC unit does and why it's going to be obsolete for me. So the SETEC unit is a combination of a few things, an AC battery charger, it's a fuse box and it also protects the battery, it has a cutoff switch when the battery voltage drops too low. Here I am changing all the 12 volt circuits from the old SETEC unit into my new fuse box. Got the main part of the circuit board done. Battery charge is working. Got my fuse box all wired up with the 12 volt circuits. So this old SETEC unit is obsolete now. This is the hole where the inverter is going to go. It's amazing what a few cable ties can do. Tidy it up. This one is coming from the trailer plug. There's an Anderson plug next to the trailer plug. Sort of plug into the car. 
and the car's alternator will charge this battery when I'm driving. So this needs to go into the DC to DC charger and these inputs here, which I'll feed underneath and come up. Okay, so I've ran a new wire from the DC to DC charger, which is just above here, through here, and I'm putting a new trailer plug in. The old one was uh, pretty bad condition, pretty small gauge wire, rusty in there, so I thought I'd just replace it, whole new wire, got some 6 gauge stuff, 25mm, a lot bigger. Uh, just a matter of putting the Anderson plug on now and then giving it a test and make sure that it, it clicks over that front lip there, which is not quite there yet. Click and click. So now they can't move at all, they're locked in. Since we wanted an accurate way to manage our power usage, I installed a shunt into the system which this little battery monitor screen connects to and you can monitor all sorts of consumption. So sometimes the hardest part is working out what's going on with all the wiring because the previous owner has changed everything. So there's tons of wires going everywhere. You've got to try and isolate what's what by doing some tests. Don't need this anymore. So I've got the inverter mounted now in the old hole where the CESAC unit was. I'll need to put a shroud around here to make it look a bit neater. Had to do it a pretty interesting way since there was no way to get the back screws in. So I'll show you what I did. So all I did was screw the mounting bit of timber on the back holds it up level. It's just a standard cam buckle, a couple of loops screwed to the floor and just do it up tight, a little bit of rubber on top. It also makes it easy to take out because we'll probably use this inverter in the car when we go away camping for the weekend. If we need 240 volt, you can easily just undo those two screws under the cam buckle, take the inverter out. Easy. I also installed two 180 watt solar panels on the top of the pop top, but it ended up being quite an elaborate job, so I'm going to make a separate video about that exclusively. I utilized the old cable that was running from the battery to the SETEC unit, and I extended it, ran it underneath the table, and put a 12 volt outlet there. So that's it under there, under the table. That's a good sign. It's charging. And this breaker here, separate one that goes to the battery, big cables, because that runs the 1500 watt inverter. Still have to finish up this little hole in here. I'll just put like a piece of fabric in there. That goes backwards. You can access your inverter in there. I just need to put a bit of like aluminium trim around the edge just to finish it off. That'll look nice, but yeah, it'll just look like that. Well, there is one more thing that I want to do that I didn't mention before, and that's put a exhaust fan into this whole area here. It has a grate here next to the fridge, so that'll be the air inlet. And in this spot in here, I'm going to put a 90 mil exhaust fan and it's going to have a temperature sensor on it. So it'll only activate when this compartment or when the sensor gets to 31 degrees and that'll exhaust straight downwards. I'll just put a little nozzle downpipe. This bit of gauze was on the other side. I just, I'll just i reuse that. And that's pretty much the last thing I need to do here. That's taken me probably just over two weeks from the research stage to the design stage 
uh, which consists of this initial drawing uh, to sourcing, you know, the the battery and the charges, and then you know multiple trips to Jaker for all the different wiring and you know terminals, components, that sort of stuff. A few eBay orders. Um, yeah, so it's taken a couple of weeks, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's pretty neat and versatile, and it'll be sufficient for what we need. Now, 200 amp hours is plenty for our needs. We don't use that much power, uh, and it's only really for work purposes. And we always have the ute as a backup, which is its own little power plant. So that's the vid. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, just put them in the comments below. Um, you can do us a huge favor by subscribing to our channel and getting notified. Uh, and most of our videos are documenting our travels, but I'm gonna try and make more of these helpful videos to help other people out. Um, but yeah, cheers.